Hello everybody and welcome back to Adrian's Chemistry Laboratory. As I've said before in these videos we're trying to do them in one take without any editing so please be patient with us until we're able to afford a very expensive camera. Now you might notice something slightly different about me is that my Covid beard has disappeared and therefore I'm looking dashingly handsome. Um, and I thought it would be very interesting for us to extract the element sulphur out of a human hair which we're going to do later on in another experiment. Now to do that we're going to need some dilute sulfuric acid and as you can see I'm out of dilute sulfuric acid and in another future video I'm going to show you how to safely prepare a molar solution of sulfuric acid. So what I thought I would do is show you the dangers of concentrated sulfuric acid. And one of the reasons that sulfuric acid is extremely dangerous is it, it has a huge affinity for water. And if you want to understand the reason why it has a huge affinity for water and you look up Wikipedia, it might as well say because God made it that way. But it's to do with thermodynamic principles because of its affinity and attraction for water. Now, is the system okay here? Yes, good. Okay, now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to show you in the fume cupboard some uh, experiments using concentrated sulfuric acid and I'm going to explain to you why it's so dangerous and maybe some safety principles you can use if you're handling concentrated sulfuric acid. Now concentrated sulfuric acid is used in uh, numerous uh, places in industry from fertilizers to explosives uh, to oil refining and in plastics and to use concentrated sulfuric acid I'm going to don my plastic suit myself and I've got a pair of very thick rubber gloves uh, and that is because it's not a fashion statement it's to protect my clothing because we're going to see what happens if sulfuric acid was splashed onto clothing or skin. Uh, now normally I would put a full face mask on but because I'm speaking to you in the camera I'm going to don these goggles just to keep my eyes safe and I'm not using huge quantities of sulfuric acid today either. So my assistant is going to point the um, camera to the fume cupboard. Now, you can see we've got 2.5 litres in a Winchester jar here. Uh, it's in a safe break jar which means that that is coated with a plastic coating so if the glass broke the plastic would contain the sulfuric acid. Now sulfuric acid has such an affinity for water. What I've got is just some normal tissue. I'm going to show you what would happen if I accidentally spilt some sulfuric acid and decided to then clean it up with some tissue or cloth. And as you can see, immediately the tissue has begun to dissolve. And what's actually happening is the cellulose molecules are being ripped apart and the sulfuric acid has such an affinity for the water in it, the hydrogen and the oxygen, that it's turning it to pure carbon. As you can see, that's turned it to pure slush. Now, the other thing that uh, is very important if you're handling sulfuric acid is to have lots and lots of water about. Uh, even a good bucket of water uh, in the laboratory is always handy, or of course, if you're in a modern laboratory, you'll have uh, a shower of some sort. But it's really good to have, I've got large beakers of water about the laboratory and a bucket outside, just in case there was an accident. So you can see what it's done to just tissue, so there's no point wiping it up with tissue. So we'll put that out of our way. And as you can see, I'm handling sulfuric acid on asbestos mats, uh, or heatproof mats, and not asbestos nowadays. And also it's very useful to put sulfuric acid if you're handling it on a tray. Because no matter what, you'll always get a drip. And it's very useful that if you do get a drip, you can just wash down the outside of the bottle. And you can neutralize then anything left over using something like a sodium carbonate a solution, which is very, very useful. So I'm going to show you also another very common experiment where sulfuric acid is added to some sugar. Right, so we're going to just add some sulfuric acid to just normal sugar. Okay, there's about 20 grams of sugar in that. And I'm actually going to speed the reaction up by adding just a tiny bit of water. Now, whenever I added that tiny bit of water, there was a reaction, a heat reaction. And as you can see, the reaction started where the water is. And that's a very, very useful lesson to us. You can see there, it has immediately carbonized the sugar. It's taken the water. Uh, out of it in the form of, of oxygen and hydrogen it's going to leave behind carbon and whenever you add small amounts of water to acid uh, it can get up to about 120 degrees centigrade 
And this actually will, will increase the rate of this reaction because, of course, whenever you heat react, uh, substances up, the molecules get a bit more excited. As you can see, they're getting excited here. I'm just producing copious amounts of steam, sulfur dioxide, uh, which you can't smell, thankfully, because the fume cover's working, some carbon dioxide, and a little bit of carbon monoxide. But can you imagine if that was spilt on your skin? Because in a matter of seconds, that's what it would do to you. So we'll get that out of the way. Now we're going to add some uh, of last night's chicken form protein, which this would be a good demonstration of what would happen if concentrated sulfuric acid was to touch your skin and how easily your skin would dissolve. So you have to treat concentrated sulfuric acid with enormous respect and you're going to see why. As you can see the reaction with the um, skin of the chicken is instantaneous and if you put your memory back to Walter White and Jesse Pinkman uh, they would be much better using concentrated sulfuric acid to dispose of their bodies instead of hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is an incredibly toxic acid but it's not a very strong acid because it doesn't propagate very well in water. As you can see there sulfuric acid does and it has such an affinity for water it's going to start very quickly carbonizing and literally cooking this chicken by the time it's finished it'll be well overdone i'm just going to put the few bit down because there's a very vigorous reaction there and as you can see if that was your skin or your face or your eye which is why it's very very important to use correct ppe and the fume cupboard is filling full of sulfur dioxide and steam and carbon dioxide and there's not going to be very much left to eat after that. Now you'd think that Walter White with all his chemistry skills would have known to do that. And the last little demonstration I'm going to show you is just adding some sulfuric acid to some flowers. Now it's very very important. Oh, I just discovered, look at that. Two very lucky snails. We're about to get roasted. So we'll put them outside to keep them safe. Just check there's nothing on these. Yes, yeah, so we've just got two little daffodils. And it's very important to label concentrated sulfuric acid. Because quite literally, it looks like water. And of course, if you left that lying about, uh, somebody could very stupidly drink it. And this is what would happen to their insides if they drunk it. And unfortunately in, uh, in life, many people have uh, in the 1940s and 50s, whenever uh, labelling wasn't as good as it is today, whenever specific uh, poisons were labelled corrosive, they would have seen the word poison or toxic and wanting to do away with themselves, they would have drunk in that thinking it would have poisoned them when in fact all it did was burn their insides out. And you can see those daffodils in a matter of seconds are just dissolving and if we leave them in long enough exactly the same thing will happen uh, with the meat. Now, hope that has shown you some of the dangers of concentrated sulfuric acid and maybe how to safely handle it. And I'm trying to get my subscription list up to about 2,000 and if we do we're going to celebrate by opening this container which contains oleum and they're going to show you some very fascinating and interesting experiments by using oleum. Now oleum is a concentrated sulfuric acid with uh, sulfur trioxide dissolved in it and this particular sample uh, contains 20% so we're going to show you uh, some very interesting experiments with that so please do like and subscribe and thank you for watching.